Hello everyone. I, Dr. B. S. Chitra Devi, Assistant Professor of the Botany Department, PSGR Krishna Mal College for Women, Coimbatore, welcome you all to the part 2 of the session on plant tissue culture. In the first part, I introduce you to the historical aspects, the basics in designing and organizing a plant tissue culture laboratory. In this session, we shall deal with the techniques involved in plant tissue culture. Now, we all are familiar with the steps of micropropagation. Let us see about the first step. The selection of plant for micropropagation is based on the following factors. Is it for research? Is it for conservation? Or is it for class demonstration? If it's for research, then it depends on the type of research that is being undertaken and its outcome. Someone may be interested in mass production of the plant in order to extract a metabolite or induce a new metabolite formation, etc. In such a case, the person may select the plant based on its medicinal property, seasonal availability, use in traditional medicine, etc. The selection of plant for research requires a thorough literature survey. Let us now take the criteria for conservation. In such a case, the plant may be red listed or not abundantly available locally. In both these cases, that is research and conservation, the plant can be a herb, shrub, tree or a liana. Though the micropropagation method depends entirely on the habit of the plant and also the family of the species. If the purpose is to educate students on the methodologies involved, then any commonly available plant, especially herbs, can be chosen. Since they respond faster, the students can view their results within the completion of the term. Isolation of explant. First, what is an explant? It is the smallest tissue, preferably below 1 cm of the plant part that is used to initiate a culture, which leads to the production of hundreds of new plants. Again, the explant may be chosen for many reasons. If it is for research, then it is based on the literature survey. If it is for conservation, then meristems shall be chosen so as to get true to type plants. If it is for class demo, you can choose both meristems and non-meristematic tissues. The size of the explant is mostly below 1 cm or it can be a single layer of cells or single cells can be used as explants. Age of the explant is also an important factor. Juvenile tissues respond best. The commonly used disinfectants for plant tissue culture are calcium hypochlorite, sodium hypochlorite, hydrogen peroxide, ethyl alcohol, silver nitrate, mercury chloride, benzalkonium chloride. The sterilization procedures may be enhanced by placing the material in a 70% ethyl alcohol solution prior to treatment with another disinfectant solution. The use of a two-step sterilization procedure has proven beneficial with certain species. Using a wetting agent such as TN20 or 80 can be added to the disinfectants to reduce surface tension and allow better surface contact. Conducting the sterilization processes under vacuum also results in the removal of air bubbles and provides a more efficient sterilization process. The surface sterilized explants are inoculated onto the culture medium under aseptic conditions. After inoculation, the culture tubes are incubated under controlled illumination and temperature. Frequent subculturing is necessary to maintain healthy cultures. Once the desired results are obtained, that is either callus or multiple shoots, etc., you can go for organogenesis or somatic embryogenesis, then rooting and hardening and field transfer. All media are different combinations of macronutrients, micronutrients, amino acid source and vitamins. Media can be modified according to convenience. 
based on the plants chosen specific types of media can be used for specific plants for example linsnaya and skog ls medium philips and collins l2 medium gambogs b5 medium blades medium can be used extensively for legumes lenman orkin medium schenken hildebrand medium natsensi medium can be used for orchids woody plant medium can be used for propagating lianas murashi and skog medium i will turn it as universal besides these criteria in the media the plants depend heavily on carbon sources such as sucrose other sugars may also be substituted in rare cases for desired results the use of growth regulators growth adjuvants and other additives are necessary x plants differ in their responses while mass propagated there are two main pathways of x plant response direct and indirect we shall see the direct regeneration pathway now this pathway produces new plants with high genetic fidelity to the mother plants direct regeneration is a method commonly seen in nodal x plants shoot tip x plants and sometimes internodal and leaf x plants too follow the pathway of direct regeneration it may be attributed to the media components and growth regulators added we may see an example of a direct regeneration pathway multiple shoot induction from nodal x plants of a medicinal plant belonging to acanthaceae so here you can see we have used murashigan skog medium with 3% sucrose 0.8% agar and the ph was adjusted to 5.8 and we have used bap kinetin tdz iaa in the given range both individually and in combinations and the multiple shoots obtained from these media were taken for rooting on either iaa or iba and then for hardening we used perlite sand and coirpith in the ratio of 1 is to 1 is to 1 here you can see the effect of cytokinins on multiple shoot induction from nodal x plants mind you only the cytokinins see so you can see benzalaminopurine 1 mg per liter produces such a response and 2 mg per liter produces callus along with multiple shoots kinetin does not produce callus and kinetin in lower concentration you can see the roots are the shoots are more yellow and less than when kinetin added at 1 mg per liter here you can see when combined with iaa the formation of multiple shoots from the nodal x plants were observed like this iaa in combination with kinetin only lesser number of shoots developed iaa in combination with tdz induced profuse callusing iaa with kinetin you can see less number of multiple shoots but no callus and iaa and kinetin in equal com combinations you can see multiple shoots are produced in large amount for rooting we excised a 2 cm multiple shoot from the multiple shoot we excised a single shoot of 2 cm length and put it on a filter paper bridge in a liquid medium containing ms plus indole butyric acid at 1 mg per liter of course this medium gave the best result so it is represented in this photo and adventitious roots were also seen to arise from the nodal x plants and we went for hardening and then finally greenhouse transfer so one more example i would like to present you from the family fabaceae here you can see ms plus benzylaminopurin ms plus benzoaminopurine at higher concentration induces callus tdz induces shoots which are deformed kinetin produces normal multiple shoots and kinetin at higher concentration you can see a lot of multiple shoots were induced and when iaa was combined with certain various cytokinins you can see the results so here the shoots were taller and but lesser in number so again these shoots were taken for rooting so now we'll see about indirect regeneration 
Here, the explants produce callus. Regeneration of plants from callus is called as organogenesis. So once your explant produces a callus, it may produce a shoot or a root from the callus. So it is known as organogenesis. Sometimes the callus may behave like somatic embryos. So in that case, you get a somatic embryogenesis. The somatic embryogenesis may be direct or indirect. That is direct somatic embryogenesis means directly on the explant, you will all the cells will differentiate into embryos. They will start behaving like embryos. However, in indirect, you can see a callus phase followed by a somatic embryogenesis phase. So callus can be induced from any type of explants. All the explants can be induced to form callus by the addition of growth hormones. So in this example, I'll show you an indirect regeneration pathway that is somatic embryogenesis, which was premediated by callus formation. So this is indirect somatic embryogenesis. For initiation of callus, we used MS medium in combination with 2,4-D, IAA, NAA and BAP. And after four weeks of culture on this medium, we transferred the explants or the callus developed onto hormone-free MS medium and we called it as differentiation medium. And after a four week period on this medium, we took the callus and placed it on maturation medium, which contains just MS alone, or MS in combination with BAP or MS in combination with abscisic acid or adenine sulfate individually. Now you can see the results. So this was the explant. We used cotyledon as explant and then you can see the initiation of callus. So in this experiment, you can see two types of callus regenerated. One is type 2 callus, one is type 1 callus. So you can see the difference. Type 1 callus was colorless. Type 2 call callus was filled with chlorophyll. And then it had a definite organization of uh, vascular tissues. However, in this type 1 callus, we can say it is a friable callus because once you drop this callus into distilled water, the cells just separate. And this callus, the cells will not separate. So this is green, hard and non-friable. This is not green and this is not hard and this is friable. So when we took the hard callus and then placed it on the maturation medium, we could obtain, we could see many changes in the callus. Here, when observed under a high magnification microscope or stereo microscope, you can see the differentiation of the embryogenic callus. So globular somatic embryos started to appear and then heart-shaped somatic embryos can also be observed. And the one drawback in this method of regeneration is high genetic modifications. So you can see many abnormal somatic embryos also developed and then Instead of maturing into a plant, the somatic embryo again started to produce numerous somatic embryos. Secondary somatic embryos were produced in large amount. So these are the stages which we were able to observe in our embryogenic callus. So globular somatic embryo, heart-shaped, again a heart-shaped, a mature heart-shaped, a torpedo-shaped and a cotyledonary stage. So this is the end of part two. With this, we shall end the part two. In the third part, we shall see about the applications of plant tissue culture. Thank you for having patience to listen to me. Thank you.